Pittsburgh, PA, where state-sponsored NFL media, quick to tell us, NFL media, that there is optimism that Russell Wilson will be back. He's missed a bunch of time because of injury. He's supposed to come back here as possibly as soon as today. Woohoo! Not that that matters that much, but Russell Wilson's been out with a calf injury, and he showed up hurt. First day of work, he was not ready to go, and that has opened up the opportunity. Knock, knock. Uh, Justin Fields to see more time, and he's been getting most of the time with the starters, the presumed starters there in Pittsburgh. So if you've not heard the latest on this, and maybe not, we're now hearing that Justin Fields, while he still has some work to do, uh, Justin Fields in order to catch up with Russell Wilson in that race for the starting job. The Steelers, though, are said to be, quote, open-minded. Ooh, open-minded that he can beat out Russell Wilson. So that's the money quote right there. So let's not waste any more of our time and get right into it. The question, as we discussed, the Steelers are said to be open-minded on Justin Fields beating out Russell Wilson. Is that how you see it? Is that how you see it? So I've got Swiss Army Knife, Transformers, and Audible. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make random old movies, which have been airing on monitor number four here. Random old movies on monitor number four. Not that you can see that. So first of all, uh, here's my position on Justin Fields beating out Russell Wilson, right? Uh, we are not seeing eye to eye on this one. Uh, we're not. Uh, maybe you are, but I'm. I'm not seeing eye to eye to eye to eye with you. Like Mike Tomlin. Okay, Mike Tomlin is damned if he does and damned if he doesn't in this case because Russell Wilson is washed up. He's now been bad for three consecutive years. He's traveled down Glory Road back in the day, right? But he's a shell of what he had been. In Seattle, not that he was ever an MVP candidate or anything like that, but now he's currently hitchhiking out in the boondocks of the NFL. But then on the other hand, you've got Fields, who there's a cult of Justin Fields fanboys. They're like, this guy's the greatest thing ever. We love Justin Fields. He can do it all. He's a fantasy football rock star. But he's someone that looks better on a highlight sizzle reel then play in and play out. Now, he said everyone looks better on a scissor. Okay. But with him, the warts really come out, right? I mean, the air quality in Pittsburgh at the quarterback position is a mix of smog and haze. That's what the air is like. And you talk about being stuck here if you're Mike Tomlin between the devil and the deep blue sea. Because if you go with Russell Wilson, he's long in the tooth. He's Mr. Mr. Unlimited. You've got that whole nonsense. And the fact that he's just not good anymore. And Mike Tomlin, what he needs to do here, because if you go with the other guy, he stinks also. You get out the Swiss Army knife, and you have to smooth out the rough edges around Justin Fields if you go that direction. But either way, there's no good decision here to make. There's no solid decision between these two. All right, now secondly, to the high-speed sports wire we go. The high-speed sports wire, because reports over the weekend, saying that the New England Patriots and the Cleveland Browns, that they are the front runners in trade talks with the 49ers to acquire Brandon Ayuk. Do you believe it? All right, so I spent a few minutes as I was cruising through the desert, heading back from Vegas back home, uh, looking at at this story, and I thought, you know what? I'm a jaded realist when it comes to this stuff. I don't buy it, right? If we were a Transformers character, and why shouldn't we be a Transformers character? We would be Skepticus Maximus. We're skeptics, right? Uh, the Autobot Headmaster. And here's, the, here's why. Th- this story is like poison ivy. It's been going on months and months and months and months and months. Realistically, it would be out of character to trade the player at this particular point because the season is underway. Training camp has begun. Exhibition games. Everyone's going to be playing this weekend exhibition games the time for john lynch to say bye bye to brandon ayuk would be before the draft but that didn't happen for whatever reason so the window is now closed you'll have to come back in the morning maybe we'll open it up again later but you're not going to get 
help in real time. This is the golden era for the 49ers in terms of contention. And their quarterback, Brock Purdy, he's going to get paid after this year. So this is it. And the band is together. So if you're John Lynch and the 49ers, you're like, you got to ride this thing out. Unless Brandon Ayuk becomes a complete schmuck and there's a rebellion inside the locker room. Barring that, you're better off keeping him around. And there's a shot, there's a scenario where he ends up sticking around long term because Debo Samuel's a little older, and Debo Samuel's a guy that also has an out in his contract after the season. Now, final thought, we go to Denver. Why are we going to Denver? Because Broncos coach Sean Payton made a Drew Brees, Bo Nix comp. Say what? Yeah, he made a comparison. Now, it wasn't a full-throated comparison between Bo Nix and Drew Brees. He also took a little subtle jab at Russell Wilson, and he said something that resonated with me, and that's why I wanted to bring it up with you. In case you missed it, uh, Peyton said sack numbers are a reflection more on the quarterback than the offensive line. That's what I've been saying for a long time. It's Fat shaming by skinny skinny people. Skinny people rip the offensive line when the quarterback gets sacked because they don't know ball, and they like to rip fat people. Uh, but we know that in reality, more times than not, it's quarterback malfeasance that leads to the sack. Not always, but I'll give you an example. Like Daniel Jones is horrible for the New York Giants. But there's a lot of dumb people that think that it's not his fault. It's all the offensive line's fault. Well, you could put a line of dump trucks protecting him, like immovable objects in front of the quarterback of the Giants, and it wouldn't matter because it's on him. He's the problem, and Sean Payton is spot on with that. Now, whether or not Bo Nix will be able to repeat what he did at Oregon and Auburn and all the other places he played, it's been about 12 years in college football, whether he can do that or not is up for debate, and the only way we will figure that out is when the season begins and all that. But the, the premise, I'm right there with Sean Payton, that sack numbers are a reflection more on the quarterback than the offensive line. And he went on to smother Drew Brees with love, talking about Drew Brees being one of those guys that is a tough sack and all that. And the ball came out, and uh, he was comparing – and contrasting that. And it's it was a subtle shot also at Russell Wilson, who is terrible at avoiding the sack. Just terrible at that. So how do you digest the latest stylings of Sean Payton on Broncos quarterback Bo Nix and his ability to avoid sacks and comparing him slightly to Drew Brees? So to me, my answer is mathematical. That this is mathematical. Sean Payton, sure, he's sugarcoating the $39 million turd burger that the Broncos have to barbecue and eat. Denver is swallowing a lot of the money that Russell Wilson was owed on that mega contract. So $39 million going to Russ on that contract to be hurt in Pittsburgh. And so now it's rookie Bo Nix we trust. Sean Payton calling an audible. He's not going, Omaha, Omaha. He's going, Bo, Bo, Bo is what he's saying. And it's the art of manifestation is what it is. Because they're all in. They they have no other option. You see the quarterback depth chart in Denver? It's either this Bo Nix cat turns out to be good or Zach Wilson is going to be the quarterback. But positive affirmations from Sean Payton trying to speak Bo Nix into good quarterback play. And I I will tell you this, for last season, Russell Wilson, who was washed, that dumbed-down offense the Broncos ran, Russell Wilson, statistically, to the untrained eye, was very good in some categories. Of course, if you watched the entire body of work, you realize that it was smoke and mirrors, but you can do that with a rookie quarterback, Bo Nix. You could spoon feed Bo Nix and get some decent production, or at least numbers that are misleading, out of the player. You could absolutely do that. All right, it is the Ben Maller Show. If you want to comment on any of that, you can join us here. We are back. Well, most of us are back in the set. I think uh, 
Lee's right now. If the people over there at Taco Bell could hurry up, they uh, they need to help out. Uh, L- Lorena, she I'll give Lorena credit. She's finally realizing that the the food delivery, while it's great if you're rich, if you're not rich, probably not the way to go. I'm just saying. So uh, Lee's made a run. There's a fast food place just down the street here on uh, on Ventura, right? It's Ventura Boulevard, just down the road here. So if anybody's in line there, Lee's over there. So. Yummy. Jeez. What are we getting, Lorena? What what are we ordering here? Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Well, I know that, but what are you getting at Taco oh, Bell? Oh, I'm getting a cravings box, Ben. Cravings box. What's yeah. in the cravings box? It comes with a supreme chalupa. Okay. Um, beefy five layer burrito, side nachos, cinnamon twisties, and a hard taco, and oh. a drink for eight dollars and fifty four cents. Eight dollars and fifty four cents. Those are California prices. And are you getting any hot sauce with that? Oh, I didn't tell him to get me. Oh mild yeah, you better sauce. text him right now. I'll, I'll go call call him right oh, now. No. I know. Call him right now. You got to get the hot sauce. Just pour hot sauce all over your order. That's what I would do. But I'm not currently eating right now, so I'm not, I'm not going to touch that. 